another eviction, another flooded house, and we found what in the basement? Yeah, all this and more with our favorite paralegal, Bitta Delisi, right after this. Yes, my friends, here's our favorite paralegal in all of the land, as I like to say. But how are you? I'm good, Garrett. How are you? I am doing excellent, excellent. And and Bitta always comes prepared with a story. And I got to tell you, I've, the, I've had a little glimpse in today's story. And let me tell you, you... Right now, you cannot guess where this story is headed. <laughs> of course, it starts with eviction, and that's just where it goes, but that's not where it ends. What's our story for the week? That's right. So first thing I will start off by saying that the property is located in, it's a rural property. And we had an eviction. The tenant actually owed in and around $52,000 to the landlord. Uh, we went through a very lengthy, almost two-year battle with this tenant that's why the arrears are so high battle with this tenant and battle with the landlord and tenant board uh, because every chance that this tenant got they would delay they would do something to delay the process and then finally we got our eviction and i have to say my landlord is in his i think he's in, in and around mid 80s so he's about 85 years old okay um we get an eviction and my husband Rob always attends the evictions just in case we, uh, he attends the property. The tenants are gone, which is great, right? The locksmith is there. My landlord is there. They do a walk around of the property to secure the property. And what these tenants have done, actually, they have um, clocked, they have put something in each drain. So in each bathroom and each sink, they have put something to clog that drain. They've turned on all of the uh, taps. Wow. And as you can imagine, the entire property was flooded. Okay, so that's number one. Not only was the entire property flooded, but there was a, a big stench coming from the property that nobody could figure out where is this coming from? What is this smell? They're walking around the property, walking around the exterior of the property, and then Rob notices that at the side of the property, there's this, there's this opening. Mm -hmm. So he sticks his head in there. There's the stench that's coming from there, there. But Gary, you'll never guess, or you didn't guess when we were playing the guessing game, <laughs> what was there. It was a dead animal. And I mean, when you think dead animals, you think raccoons, squirrels, what can get into the property? But it, it was a dead cow. Yeah, that's crazy. It was a dead cow, something that we've never seen before, never experienced before. And it doesn't look like someone um, killed the cow, like physically killed the cow. It looked like that poor animal died because no one fed it. It, wow. it died of starvation, just the way um, the photo looked. We won't share a photo today because, you know, it's it, it's it's not a good photo and yeah, not appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Not appropriate. That's the word I was looking for, <laughs> but uh, that's our story for the week. That's crazy. That's crazy. And there's a lot of elements there, like with the taps being left on and, and flooding, you know, flooding what could be done of the property and things like that. And, and, and Ben and I just, just mentioned off camera, there is never a day where, well, no, no, hang on a second. There's never two days the same in the real estate world, right? It, there's always That's something, it. always kind of a little curveball or something like that. That's there's nuts. always something. Yeah. And I can, I already know where everyone's mind went because that's where my mind went. How do you get rid of something like that? That's, that's for another story or ah. drop it in the comments. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy. That's crazy. And, and this is, you know, you, you think to yourself, yeah, I'm going to go out and buy an investment property. Or this is the reason why people don't buy investment properties. And Ben and I don't have these conversations or share these conversations to scare people. It's really the reality of it. And, and, when, when you invest in something or when you when you take hold and take ownership of something, you got to do it with eyes wide open. And these yeah. are the stories that open eyes wide. I tell you, I tell you, never a dull moment, but a dead cow. A dead cow. I've, I didn't see that coming. 
I didn't yeah, see that coming. No. Yeah. I <laughs> can't imagine did. I can't imagine Rob's face when he first saw it, right? Just like what? Or that smell. I yeah. mean uh, yeah. yeah and that's for those of you who smelled a dead body, you know how really bad that 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 smell is, but a dead animal, I think it's yeah. about the same. <laughs> crazy. Right? Crazy, crazy. There you have it. There you have it. Okay. So What's going on in our real estate world? And we were just chatting offline. I'm I'm starting to see a lot more. Now, when I say a lot more, just a, an uptick in properties, investment properties being listed. And we're, we're seeing that from, you know, obviously for various different reasons. And, and the underlying reason is the cost of carrying that property. And I was curious, but are, are you seeing, are you getting some of those similar phone calls with some of the investors that you work with? I am. I'm getting a, a lot of the investors who are, I would say, um, the, the smaller investor who, who has that one or two other properties other than their uh, home, uh, uh, their principal residence. And they're saying, I really can't do it. I need to get these tenants out as soon as possible. Mm. Money is not even a factor. They just want to go straight and do a cash for keys. I mean, I have, I have one investor who wants to pay $60,000 to their tenant. And I said, well, the interest rates are going to come down eventually. Why don't you put that $60,000, you know, use the, the differential from the rent that the tenant is paying to what, you know, your payment is and carry it because, you know, what goes up must come down. Like, as you know, Gary, the real estate is very cyclical. Yeah. And, and the, 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 the market is going to go up eventually. Yeah. Yeah, it will. We're, we're probably, I, my estimation is in, not not until about 2025 as we kind of level out with interest rates. And and there's a saying out there, Bitta, too, from from a lot of my investor friends and, and colleagues and, and people that, uh, that I look up to from that perspective as well. You know, survive until 25, right? That's and, right. And if we can get through this valley, right, over the next couple of years, as it were, uh, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. And yeah. and I know there's this sediment out there, oh, every investor must be selling. Well, you and I just had a conversation. We own properties, and we're not looking at selling. And and I'm curious to, and, and this is more of a rhetorical question in a sense, and I'd love to hear in the or see in the comments later, you know, those investors that are selling, are they the ones that purchase in the last, you know, one to three or four years, perhaps, maybe, right? I, I just, I wonder what that that seller profile looks like from that perspective, you know? Could be, absolutely. Yeah. It's the newer, I, I don't want to say newer, but um, the recently purchased or recently renewed uh, investor who has recently renewed their mortgage that is kind of scrambling now. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. I mean, yeah, perhaps. But if you're looking to pay, if, if, if the landlords are looking to pay cash for keys an excessive amount, why not just keep that amount and, you know, use it as the differential until the market, you know, kind of, or, or the, the interest rates cool off a little bit. Yeah. 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 No, that's good insight. That's good insight. And and you and I, like we, I get it. We've owned properties, you know, for 10, some of our properties, 10 plus years and investors like Bitta and I, we're not looking at selling, you know, we have tremendous amount of equity in those properties. And I think the important fact here is we both talked offline our mortgages or our mortgage, our monthly mortgage payment, even though some of our properties might be on variable rate and those rates have gone up, the mortgage balance is manageable. How about we say it like that? Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Mortgage, yeah. If your mortgage balance is uh, manageable and if you can hang on to it, hang on to it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Are, are you still getting phone calls you know, obviously the cash for keys might be the number one type of phone call. Uh, are there other ways to help manage that property? Are there other ways to help manage that tenant in, in, a, in an eviction standpoint? Or is it the best course usually cash for keys? The quickest way uh, go. is the cash for keys. Yeah. Because this way, the tenant gets something, the landlord's getting something, and everybody just moves on in 30 to 60 days or whatever date that you agree. 
the route of the board gear is seven to eight months. Yeah. So I had, I had a client uh, send me a message right before I logged on here. And she said, a friend of mine got her tenant out in 60 days. Why are we waiting months to, to get to the board? And I said, how did your tenant leave? How did this person get the tenant out? And they said, well, the tenant moved out. I said, well, obviously, if the tenant moves out, then they move out. But if they don't, then we have to go through the legal channels. And it's a lengthy government system that we have to go through. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm curious, do you feel, and this is that everyone needs to be educated, and whether you're a tenant, a landlord, investor, everyone needs to be educated and, and know their, their rights, as it were. Uh, do you feel the the tenant and perhaps the landlord are more educated today than they were, say, five years ago or 10 years ago? You know what, Gary? I find tenants are more educated than the landlords, than they ever were, right? Never mind five or 10 years ago, ever were. I find that landlords, they just pick up the phone and call a rep. Or uh, my landlords, uh, my clients, they just pick up a phone and call me or they send an email and I, I just respond to them. But tenants, they do research, right? Just because they don't have access to legal reps like landlords do. So they go on the internet, they go on Facebook forums, they do their research, they call the board. And, you know, it, it's not only they pick up the phone and they go, hey, landlord and tenant board, what's the answer to this? No, because through conversation, they ask other questions, they become more educated. Whereas landlords, I find they don't really have I don't know if it's their, they don't have the time to do it or they just don't want to do it. They just want to know the answer to their question and that that's it. If I have another question, I'll call you or I'll send yeah. you an email. But tenants, I mean, they have their phones at the tip of their fingers. Like these smartphones, uh, it, it's amazing. They have information at the tip of their fingers and it's quick information. Yeah. So I find tenants are more um, educated now than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you might think to, to yourself, if you're watching, uh, you know, we're always against the tenant. Well, no, Ben and I are not always against the tenant. They are our favorite partner in our real estate ownership. They are, you know, in a sense, our most important partner. Uh, but you also have to protect your investment by having great tenants. And we have great tenants and don't worry, we've had the opposite of that as well. Right. And that's, that's on us. <laughs> That's on us, right? Because we're the ones that selected that tenant at yeah. the end of the day, right? And they are there are good tenants. Oh yeah, there are good tenants. Like we spent so much time, um, you know, ch trying to to research our partner and try and find, you know, part our partner. I mean, our, our boyfriends and our girlfriends and our and our spouses on the internet, trying to find something on them. Why don't we do it when we're picking our our tenants? Right, because divorcing our tenants is just as expensive. It's just as lengthy than <laughs> divorcing our partners. True. And right? usually one one wants to leave and one doesn't, right? Right. In that exactly. in that case. Uh, that's a, that's a really I, I like that analogy. That's a good one. That's a good one. What are as you know, we got a few more minutes here. What are a couple of quick easy I don't want to say easy, but I'm going to say easy, uh, easy ways that we can help research if this is the right tenant for our, our apartment, our unit, our house, like what, what are some, what are some good resources that we can use? Okay. So the newest tool, openroom.ca. Okay. I'm a huge fan of this. So openroom.ca was a website that was, um, actually was started launched by two very angry landlords <laughs> and who were kind of like screwed over by their tenants. So what they said is they're, we're going out to launch this website. And since landlord and tenant board orders are now public as of, I believe, 2020, all landlords can now upload their landlord and tenant board order on openroom.ca. So Gary, if you go on that website and you type in your prospective tenant's name, right? If there are any orders against them, it'll pop up. That is one really, really good tool that you can use. I like it. I'm I'm cert I'm putting this in right now so I don't miss it. Okay. Open room. <laughs> openroom.ca right. yeah I, I know i've been there before and i had, had actually quite frankly i've forgotten about that website this yeah. website here yeah 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 that's interesting it's a that's great tool 
That's mind you, mind you. I'm going to do this bit. Of, here we go. Oh, no, yeah. that didn't work. That didn't work. What do I want to do? There we go. Nope, that didn't work either. Well, okay. I was going to show the uh, that website just so people, I'll do a little screenshot of it while we, ha while uh, during, in, in the edits, but that's interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, mind you, Gary, it, your prospective tenant will only come up if a landlord has uploaded an order. But I think right now there's something like 8,000 or 9,000 orders. Yeah, uploaded. I see it right. Uh, yeah, you sorry it. to interrupt yeah. you. 9,000, 9,370. Nine sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, that's that's yeah. incredible. Wow. Yeah, and, it is. Is that a transparent Canadian rental ecosystem? So right across Canada, or is this mostly in, in Ontario? For that's a right? good, that's a good question, Gary. I was on there, I believe last week looking for my prospective tenant because i was qualifying a tenant uh, for my own property i think it's only in ontario i see i see I yeah think. so do your homework on, on that website uh but yeah i'm seeing things in here and you're right the court order is right front and center you search for uh your prospective tenant by name and uh it'll it'll have yeah i'm seeing one here from kitchener it's it's got the it's got the order right right up here. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And and many landlords say, you know, uh, is there many landlords are always searching for uh, a, a bad tenant site or somewhere to report bad tenants. I mean, the landlord credit bureau is always great as well to yeah. report tenants who are are in arrears. Right. You don't need an order for that either. Right. 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 So yeah. those two, I'm a huge fan of openroom.ca and landlord credit bureau. Yeah, um, no, that those are two excellent resources. I'm glad I asked that question because I had forgotten about this website. That that's a good one for sure. Yeah. Openroom.ca, and we'll make sure that we had a screenshot of that and, and put the link up yeah. for that. No, that's and awesome. it's very easy. It's very easy to upload your order on there too. Is that right? Yeah. 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 This, there, I think there's a button. Um, Yep, you're right. Up. Up, upload a court order. I click yeah. that and it asks for go. some of your specific uh, information. And then you just upload the PDF, which is the order. And uh, you yeah. hit submit. You no, that's that's fantastic. Really, really fantastic. And it so you, can, you can upload by the province and territory. So there you have it. If you're oh, not perfect. in in, uh, in Ontario, like Bitta and I are. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Good stuff, Bitta. It's always, always entertaining and enlightening and educating when we get on the phone together or the video calls together. I, I always learn something. Uh, how do people get a hold of you? Our website is the best way for people to get a hold of us, StonegateLegalServices.ca. Uh, on the website, you'll find our contact information, our email. There's actually a, a section where you can actually book a discovery call, which is kind of like a consultation uh, with uh, members of my team. So the best way to get a hold of us, StonegateLegalServices.ca. Excellent. And I'll plug it because you didn't this time. Follow them on Instagram. Bitta's shorts that she puts out there are so educational. Definitely, definitely, if you're uh, an investor, follow her on Instagram and uh, you will not be sorry. You'll, you'll be thanking us later. <laughs> Very good. So for a bit of Delisi, I'm Gary McGowan. We'll see everybody on the next episode. Bye for now. Bye for now.